Okay, so in this part we are going to talk a little bit about normal and ambient occlusion map backing. So you can see I have my main weapon here without the magazine. I put the magazine on a separate layer because it will have uh, a separate texture so we don't need this magazine right now and let's talk about normal maps right now if you select uh, this part of the weapon for example you can see in the channel box that we have some uh, key frames and when we go to a frame number two on the timeline you can see that parts of our weapon are uh, far away from each other and that's why because I want to keep them away from each other uh, to not have any glitches during the normal map baking process uh, so I will show you right now how to do something like this uh, and the barrel will be uh, damped so let's go back to a frame number one select our barrel and choose key selected and we have a key frame in this uh, frame number one so turn on our auto keys let's go to the frame number two and let's move our barrel a little bit let's say here so you can see we've got another key frame uh, on the frame number two when we go to a frame number one everything we have together when we go to a frame number two we have everything separated almost everything because we keep all these little details together uh, so we might get some glitches small glitches around here around the trigger but they will be probably easy to fix in Photoshop so I don't care about them right now so this setup will be for a normal map baking for ambient occlusion baking we will use a little bit different uh, setup because in some areas we want to have some occlusion and with this particular setup uh, we will not get this occlusion for example in the, these areas so right now what we have to do we have to put our uh, low poly mesh in exactly the same position like here and we also want to set a keyframe so let's turn on our low poly main layer and we can move it manually or copy paste uh, the number that we translate this this particular object for example the barrel so we can duplicate it by here it can be one two three four five got three and this process is also time consuming you can see we have our barrel low poly barrel on the position in the frame number two but of course we don't have it on the frame number one let's fix this So let's do another object, for example, this one. Uh, let's go to frame two. And actually, So 
so you can see that this part also works pretty okay I will repeat this part for the rest of the parts and I will go back okay so now you can see that all parts are moving uh, the gray wireframe represents our low poly mesh so you can see this is our high poly mesh moving and this is our low poly mesh is also moving so let's prepare our high poly mesh for exporting and let's turn on this layer and what I will do is just selecting the all high poly part Ctrl G on your keyboard and I will put everything in new layer and I call this layer high poly to export and add this part to this layer you can hide the main high poly layer so we have all parts on the new layer I will merge them or combine and we have to apply a smooth for this because uh, everything is sharp right now so we have to subdivide this so I'm going to use these options to subdivide my weapon and division level is 2 let's apply right now everything is smooth and clean but of course we have pretty big number of the polygons in the viewport so it might be a little laggy let's export this and we will save it as high poly 01 fbx and remember to uh, check triangulate because if x normal will detect some uh, non quad uh, polygons it will give us an error so so we've exported the high poly and this is a pretty dense mesh so we, we don't need this mesh currently in Maya scene because uh, the Maya scene file will get a uh, pretty big so we can delay this from the scene so let's go back to our low poly and we have to export also this low poly version so what I will do is create uh, another layer I will call this the layer cage I will select right now all the low poly parts click, con click ctrl D on the keyboard and merge I mean combine so we have this mesh and let's add it to the, to the uh, low poly cage So let's turn off the low poly main and of course it should be in that position so this is our low poly and this will be also our cage so right now we need a low poly file so let's export it And this time let's leave a triangulate uh, unchecked 
long poly zero one the, the name of the file and fd and so on so on uh, so <coughs> to make a cage we have to adjust this low poly version what i will do right now is go to hypershade and find a transparent numbered material I will apply this transparent numbered material to our uh, model. Let's make it a little bit brighter. Something like this will be okay, probably. And let's turn on in the background our high poly because our cage must cover completely our high poly. So in the background I mean uh, to turn on this layer as a reference so we are unable to select the high poly but we can adjust our cage. So let's select our cage, select all the vertices and let's use a move normal tool to move along the normal this cage a little bit so you can see how this cage is adjusting. So it's surrounding the high poly. And let's leave it with this very low number and let's uh, search for any kind of problem and you can see the problem is that high poly is going through our cage so it's a, a problem the normal map or the ambient occlusion map will not bake properly so we have to move this cage a little bit here. Now it should be fine. So I can see a few bugs, for example this screw is not completely covered, we can expand this. Okay, right, like here, like this. And also... Something like this is also a problem, but in this case, when I expand this cage around this part, uh, it might cause some problems for the front part of the barrel. So what I will do, I will just bake it, this part along uh, later to, to make it work okay for now let's leave it like this we can adjust this a little bit inside but on the outside i would leave it alone okay the other parts are pretty okay to me so actually let's export this 
I will apply this uh, previous number material to this one and let's export this and let's export this as a cage 01 FBX and also let you uncheck driver okay so this is our cage This is our low poly version. Let's go to the X normal. And I have done some tests, so I have here a couple of things. So to the low definition mesh, let's add our low poly zero one for the high poly high poly zero one. And let's go back to low definition mesh select this one and let's browse external cage file okay let's check our baking options let's maybe increase anti-aliasing to 4 it's just a test bake so we can leave it with the lower number but Let's set it to 4. We will see what we will get. And so you can see that our normal map is finished. Uh, I can see already few bugs here. Uh, let's preview our normal map in Maya. Let's close this tab and let's go to Maya. I will leave our part in this position, but I will duplicate it to another part. Let's create really quickly a standard pong material for our normal map. And this is our normal map. So you can see our normal map works and overall it looks pretty okay. Of course we will have some bugs. And of course here looking a little bit weird but it's working I think let's check this front part let's see our bar so you can see that we don't have this little part but this can be fixed a little bit later. Okay, so let's bring all parts together. And you can see how it looks right now. Of course, if you see on the weapon, look on the weapon with this kind of specular you see that there is some kind of uh, glitches on the surface this kind of stairs or, or gradient but this can be of course fixed in the photoshop Okay, so after baking our normal maps successfully, we can uh, start uh, working on our ambient occlusion map. Uh, so, uh, for ambient occlusion maps, the workflow is completely the same. The only difference is at the beginning where we 
put these parts uh, far away from each other uh, so we don't need to move that many parts like in normal maps uh, case in this weapon I would just move this part because this part is, is moving so we don't want any ambient occlusion baked here so this part definitely probably this part because we can move it here so we don't want any ambient occlusion of course this one because it can move like here so we don't want below this part any uh, shadowing and maybe this part because it also can be moved probably the trigger but we can fix it later after baking map and maybe this little part also and I think that's it definitely we don't want to move these parts because we want some ambient occlusion between them some shadows so everything should stay as it is right now so the rest of the process is the same so I will skip it I will show you the final ambient occlusion map of course you have to do the cage uh, for this uh, and I will show you the options for ambient occlusion test uh, test of uh, ambient occlusion you can do on even on 32 rays but for the final result some people are using even 500 or something like this you can use jitter for a little bit noisy results and if you check uncheck jitter you will get smoother results okay so right now you can see that I have our ambient occlusion texture of course I had few uh, glitches and bugs uh, but I been able easily to remove them in Photoshop so right now you can see a pretty clear texture can show you right now how the texture looks in Photoshop and you can see this texture is 4k and I forget to previously uh, tell you about this if you are baking your normal map and your ambient occlusion map it's good idea to bake it uh, bigger than it will be used in game for example so if you are going to use uh, 2k texture in your game it's good idea to bake uh, 4k textures and then after finishing your texturing process you can scale it down to to lower size so one thing I want to show you right now is that I use the same scene for the normal map baking and for the ambient occlusion baking so if you remember in frame one we have everything on the place like it is right now if i go to the frame two we have our setup for ambient for normal map baking and in frame three i've created our setup for the uh, ambient occlusion baking 
so I have everything in one scene. So let's see this also with the normal maps. So I will repeat the same process for the scope and laser sight and of course our grip and magazine. And right after this we will move to make some details on our normal map and ambient occlusion map and then we will start a final uh, color textures process.